Hey everyone, this is Kennedy. Today, I'm gonna introduce my favorite singer again. Her name is Zhang Hui Mei, and we usually call her Amen. And why just introduce her again? Cause one of my introduction video about her was banned because of the copyright. So that's why I want to do it again. And I will just combine those five videos into this one. And this video will not include any song, okay? So let's start it! Ame is a Taiwanese Aborigin and she comes from Taiwan, Taidong. Before she became a singer, a lot of people knew her was because she joined a singing competition on TV twice. The first time was in 1992 and she failed. But in 1994, she came back again and finally she got a first position. But after that, she did not release the album at once. During 1994 to 1996, she was a vocal in her cousin's band, Relax and she was also a singer in pop. One day, some people watched her performance in pop, then they wanted her to be a singer in their record company. One of the people was Zhang Xiaoyan. She's the most famous host in Taiwan at the time. And the other one was Zhang Yushen. He's the most popular singer in Taiwan at the time. And also, he was the first and the most important teacher of our main. He taught her and led her to become a superstar in the Mandarin pop music scene. But sometimes, the destiny is hard to anticipate because he passed away on 1997. Maybe someday I can make an episode to introduce his legend life. But today, I will tell you Ami's entire singing life from 1996 to now. Before she released her first album, actually she sent a song with Zhang Yushen first. And this song was released on March 1996 from the album of Zhang Yushen called The Person I Loved Most Hurt Me Deepest. And five months later, her first album, Sisters, was officially issued. And this album had an unprecedented achievement. The sales volume of Sisters in Asia was over 4 million, but the record company, afraid of the identity of Ame, will be the reason that makes the sales status not that pretty in the beginning. Cause there still was Taiwanese Aboriginal discrimination at the time. But the truth told them they are totally wrong. And the reason why this album can be that successful is because the producer of this album, Zhang Yushen, put the Aboriginal music element in this album's kiss song, Sisters. And this behavior makes her to be a pioneer about putting every aboriginal music element in the pop songs. And her second album, Bad Boy, was released on June 1997, which means they only spent 6 months to produce this album, but the sales volume of Bad Boy in Asia was even over 6 million! Better than the first one! And because these two albums were so successful, her record company decided to hold a tour for her directly on 1998. And it was also smashed the previous record in the Mandarin pop music scene. Cause she is the only one who only spent a year and 28 days to make it happen, from the first album to the first tour. Besides, she even released her third album at the day before the tour. How crazy she is! And she covered a song from her teacher Zhang Yushen in her third album, The Days Without Cigarette. But before her third album and first tour, she took a bad knock when Zhang Yushen died on November 12, 1997. He was put under emergency treatment for a month after the car accident, and he didn't make it. During that month, Ami sent a song for him, just wanted to wake him up. This song is Listen to You and Listen to Me. Even though she threw the very tough time during those days, her concert is still so successful. After the tour, she released her fourth album, Hand in Hand, on October of the same year. And my favorite song in this album is Are You Ready? 
After a year, she released her fifth album, May I Hug You, My Love, on June 1997. The sales volume of this album in Asia was over 8 million. And there's a song in this album, Three Days, Three Nights, just became a legion in recent years. Because on 2015, she sang this song in her concert at Tabit Arena. And all the fans jumped together during the song. But the vibration of jump just meant the two magnitude earthquake around the Taipei Arena. So after that, this song was banned by Taipei Arena, but they didn't make it because all the fans were so angry for it. However, Taipei Arena still has a countermeasure. They released the Army's Clouds and rejected the application of Army's concert on 2017. Okay, back to the story. During this few months, she received the awards from Automated Song Chart Award and Jazz Solid Got Best 10 Awards in Hong Kong. Both of these awards she got were the Best Female Singer of 1998. So far, she was the only one who got these two awards in the same time. And a month later from the fifth album, she started her second Asian tour on July 1999. This time, she went to 5 countries, at least 10 cities, and spent 4 months to show her love of music. After the tour, she is the first Taiwanese entertainer to be invited at CNN as a respondent. And her 6th album was released on April 2000. It's a live album called Time to Say Goodbye, Ame Hong Kong Life, and she covered a song in this album, Carmen, in Chinese version. After a month, she sang the national anthem of Taiwan at the presidential inauguration ceremony. This behavior angered the government of China, which subsequently banned her from visiting China for a few years. This situation was a super heavy blow to her undoubtedly, but it's not stop her to move on. In December of the same year, she released her seventh album, Regardless. After half a year, Ami signed a recording deal with Warner Music Taiwan in June 2001, and her first record company, Forward Music, released her eighth album, Journey, on September 2001. And a month after, her first album in Warner Music, which is her ninth album, Truth, was officially issued on October 2001. The way she sang in this album was so much different with the albums in the past. She put her love song to the higher level, more introverted and tender. Just like tell the story next to you, or just beside your ears. And my favorite song in this album is Because You Didn't Say. After a year, this album earned her a Golden Melody Award nominations for Best Mandarin Female Singer. This is the fifth time she nominated for Best Mandarin Female Singer, and finally she won it in this time. And in August 2002, she released her 10th album, Fever, and I want to share a song of this album with you, Understanding, because it is so cool. Comparing the meaning of lyrics and the music video, to me, is totally different. But I really cried for it when I first heard it, okay? Okay, for the lyrics, this song just talks about a person I take woman for instance. She just wants to move on and leave her boyfriend, but she still understands how her boyfriend loves her so much. And the relationship always had these problems that one of the people keep giving his or her love to another one, but that's it. They never communicate with their lovers, so actually they don't even understand what their lovers need. And this is the meaning of the lyrics to me. But about the music video, the main actress commits suicide in the end. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe because the main actor does his own job all the time and he keeps ignoring her. <laughs> In fact, I have no idea. You can check this out by yourself, okay? This song is understanding. And in the same month, Amy started her third concert tour, A Class Entertainment, 
world tour from 2002 to 2004. This time she visited Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, and United States. And in June 2003, she released her 11th album, Brief. After the 11th album, she continued her 8 class entertainment concert tour from November 2003 to July 2004. After the concert tour, she released her 12th album, Maybe Tomorrow, on September 2004. This time, she faced her toughest time in her singing life. In order to make some differences with the albums in the past, they put some experimental rock elements in this album, but it was too edgy at the time. Some people even say this album is so noisy. Therefore, the sales volume of Maybe Tomorrow was the worst since her debut. At the same time, the event of Nation Anthem still bothered her. On the other hand, her record company couldn't propagate her album because of the personal change. Thus, she lost almost all the shows and performances suddenly. And um, I really love this album, and my favorite song in this album is Love is the only way, and Ami is the composer of this song. After all these things, she decided to take a short break and headed to Boston for a three-month language study in the beginning of 2005. During that time, a lot of people thought Ami cannot sing anymore. And after she spent three months in Boston, actually, she's really not started anything right away. She just like disappeared for a whole year. And finally, in the end of 2005, she was invited to Golden Horse Award to perform. This time, she covered 13 classic Mandarin songs and surprised everyone. Ame is back, is the only comment of this show. In February 2006, she released her 13th album, I Want Happiness. This time, her producer and record company focused on her voice without complicated instrumental accompaniment, just her voice, and they made it. The sales volume of this album in Asia was over 2 million. In the end of 2006, she produced a musical, in Love with Carmen, which was performed twice at Tabarina, and she was also a main actress of it. In April 2007, Ame signed a recording deal with EMI Taiwan, and four months after, she released her 14th album, Star. In November of the same year, she started her fourth concert tour, Star Tour, and in March 2008, she embarked on a Japanese opera tour, Torendo, in Japan for three months. After that, she continued her star tour to March 2009, and her 15th album, Amit, was officially issued just after three months from the end of the tour, and this time, she changed her identity. She's not Ame anymore, she was Amit, which is her Aboriginal name. I need to be very serious to tell you this, Ame and Amit are not the same woman. You cannot find any Amit song on application if you tapped Amit. See? Amit? Ame. And albums? Amit just has this field, okay? So this crazy lady has two identities in Mandarin pop music scene. And what's the difference between Ame and Amit? Amit is more wild and no limit. She can sing anything she wants. So in this album, she sent a song to gay people and tell them she's proud of them. This song is Rainbow. In the mid-year of 2009, this album was nominated for 10 Golden Melody Awards and won her 6th in the end. And in November 2009, she started her 5th concert tour. Amit's first tour for a whole year. After the tour, she changed back to Ame and released her 16th album, Are You Watching? in April 2011. In September of the same year, she embarked on her 6th concert tour, Amazing World Tour, for 2 years, 
which first visited London. And after she finished her concert tour, she became one of the judges of Chinese talent show The Voice of China season two in July 2013. And her student won the competition in the end. After a year, Universal Music Group acquired EMI in June 2014. It became one of Universal's record labels, and Ame was also selected as the chef brand officer for the record label. And a month after, she released her 17th album, Faces of Paranoia. In April 2015, she embarked on her seventh concert tour, Utopia World Tour. The first station started in Taiwan, which got 10 sessions in Taipei, and there are 120,000 tickets were sold out only in 12 minutes. And this time, tickets not just a ticket, is an identity of Utopia. To prove yourself is a citizen of Utopia. They created an ID card instead of paper ticket. Here's my. I'm a citizen of Utopia, and this concert tour upgraded to version 2.0 in December 2016. By the way, this time she first visited Thailand, New Zealand, Italy, and Spain, and the total sessions of Utopia concert tour are 104, which spent two years and a half to finish. At the first day of the Utopia concert tour, she released her second Amit album, which is her 18th album, Amit 2, in April 2015. I need to share the makeup style of this album because almost all the music videos were surprised me. You see, she's a real queen without a doubt. And this time, she talked about the feminism. This song is Matriaki. In December 12, 2017, which is the last day of her singing career, 20th anniversary, she released her 19th album, Story Thief. And in September 2018, she was invited by a charity dinner, Celebrity Fight Night, at Italy to sing with Andrea Bocelli. The song "If Only" combines with three languages, which include Mandarin, Italian. In English, this song also appears on Bocelli's album C, released on 26 October 2018. Okay, guys, these are all the albums of Amen. Actually, I miss her so much. You can see from the last album to now, it's almost two years. But I still hope she can bring us the new album with the most comfortable way. So we just keep looking forward to it. Okay. Okay, thank you guys so much for your watching, and see you next time. See you.